Albert Mosin in the uh, U.S. Army, 1st Army, 7th Corps, and uh, I was on a station over in Europe, uh, fought through France, Belgium, Holland, and Germany to the end of the war. And uh, right before, about six weeks before it ended, the tank was we were hit. Four of us managed to bail out of the, five, out of the tank, five-man crew, and the assistant driver on my side shell went through and hit him and separated him in the middle. I didn't see that. I got out so fast, I didn't know that. So we got behind the tank, and the, the gunner, tank commander, asked him to run up and look in and see how or why he didn't get out. When he came back, he said he did two pieces. Oh, it hit him right in the belt. So they all came right through the tank. The tank commander, uh, when the concussion in the tank, he had his hatch open and it blew him out and he landed on the engine compartment. He had a broken back. Wow. So we were yeah. pretty fortunate. It didn't go up in flames. We all got out and the Jeep came out and picked us up, took us back away from the front. And uh, right after that, they, they hit fired a tank again and burst into flames. Wow. So we were very fortunate. A piece of trout on my leg, still got it. 65 years of been carrying it. I, I didn't sign up, I was drafted. You drafted? Yeah. So when was that? What year? Uh, October of 43. Oh, wow. And uh, I was discharged on January 1st. Well, before I was drafted, I was working in a defense plant. We were making special tools for uh, Wright, Pratt & Whitney, and uh, Wright aircraft. And I uh, worked a while over time, and then I was drafted, and, and I passed the physical, and I had five months basic training in Camp Chaffee, Arkansas. We crossed the channel, and we joined a tank outfit that was already 10 miles inland after five weeks of the invasion. They were only 10 miles inland, German, drove the German back. And we went over as replacements and uh, assigned me to a tank to drive it. The fellow that was in there, they, he had his head out and turned and he lost his head when he. <laughs> What I was replacing is still one on a tank for me. Oh. So I drove a tank all the way through from France, Belgium, Holland, and Germany until we were hit. It was about 11 months on the front line. Wow. Yeah. We were in the mechanized cavalry. Instead of having horses, we had tanks. And our job was to go up and you know, or, or tell where the enemy was. And when they'd start shooting, when we'd back up and in the infantry and the armored outfits, they'd, they'd attack, you know. But we were to, to always search out the enemy. So if you're going up there and, and uh, the tank, they're shooting at you. That's why we had tanks that uh, they shoot at you unless they had big guns. Why you couldn't, we were trying to find out get fire from them so we could tell where they were. Maybe yeah. in this town, but you couldn't see them. They were all hiding. You know, they were on the run. They'd get in this town and they'd set up their guns and, and uh, be ready for us for another attack, you know. So we were a regular attack outfit. We were just a mechanized cavalry, but they used us to attack certain towns or uh, during the Battle of the Bulge. We were, you probably heard of that, we were asked to go up and relieve people in the stone town and we were surrounded by the Germans. And we ran out of gas about three miles. Oh, that, I was that's glad that. <laughs> But we pulled this wood and had a gun point toward the stone and the tank headed the other way so we'd get out of there. If we, if you can't fight if you can't run yeah. and drive a tank very far. You can't even operate the turret, you know. So by then uh, the weather cleared and the Air Force came in and that's what bombed them. Bombed them when they were in the Germans. I should drive a tank. Well, was it like was it difficult to learn how to drive a tank? Well, we learned in uh, basic basic training. training. So you you already knew how to do it. And... Well, 
I could drive a probably a mile or two in the States and didn't have a time. And my, I was supposed to be a gunner. They trained me to be a gunner. When I got over there, they need drivers more. <laughs> so they put me as a driver. Right. Letters to your family? I was writing my mother. I get a letter from her almost every day. But when you wrote a letter back, my time, a lot of pieces were taken out of the letter. Oh. You know, you could talk about the weather and I'm okay, that's about it. The same thing every day, you know. You couldn't tell them where you were located or what you were, you know, or what was going on. They would give the enemy information if you got a hold of the what they call a victory ship. It was a low one, you know. And we sailed down through Mediterranean along the coast of Spain and through the Strait of Gibraltar. And on a, it said you could see the rocket crawled at night at midnight. Oh, I said, well, I want to get home. <laughs> <laughs> so we got out in the, in the middle of the Atlantic, and we had a terrible storm, and that ship was going like this, walking oh. sideways, and everybody was sick. They get up out of the water and then jump the head, go back down the water, and then break the dry shaft, so they had to almost stop and just sit out there until the storm was over. Well, it lasted about four days. Wow. And we were 15 days in the truck. What was your favorite part of uh, being in service? Part of um, uh, serving in the Army? Now that I'm out, I'm glad I was in the experience, but I wouldn't want to go 